you probably clicked on this video because you're either building a plane or you're thinking about building a plane. Well, I was in your shoes at one point in time, so I'm making a series of videos to help understand what it's actually like to build a plane. And if you're going to build your own plane, you have to understand that it's not just about building the plane, it's also about the tools that you need to get the job done. Now, I have a whole series about building this kit fox up behind me, sort of what it took to actually get there, but I'm trying to do some reflections on some of the other thoughts that I've had in building the plane and some sort of retrospectives on the actual holistic process of building an aircraft. Kit Fox has, in particular, and you see this with a lot of kit manufacturers, they have a builder's toolkit. That's actually something I definitely recommend getting. It's something that I got, but I wanted to do a video that talks about the top 10, my top 10 most important tools, or at least some of my favorites, that uh, were essential for at least building a Kit Fox, and they, some of them are more universal to aircraft building across the board. So, I def as I said, I definitely would recommend getting the Builder's Toolkit, particularly from Kit Fox, but it's by no means inclusive of all the things that you'll ever need to build a plane. So I did do another video that talks specifically about my sort of expectations versus reality of building the Kit Fox that's behind me. If you wanted to have more details about you know, the whole build process, go ahead and check that video out. But in general, my expectation for tools was that, you know, based on the marketing, not just Kit Fox, but across the board, a lot of these manufacturers say, oh, you can build these with just sort of basic office or uh, basic kitchen tools and uh, you know, household tools. Turns out that wasn't entirely the case. Jeez, what is that? It's a Mustang. He's been out all day. So it turns out that you can't just build one of these with everything that you got in your kitchen drawer. And you know, obviously there's some really avid builders out there that may you know, love collecting tools and have already a huge fleet of tools at their disposal. I wasn't one of those people, and I would expect sort of the average builder to not. So here's sort of an expectation of the top 10. I'm not gonna go into depth of every single tool you need. Go ahead and check out my website, 7kilofox.com, that talks about all the tools that I think that would be required to build this, plus some things that I would really like to have had. But nonetheless, we're gonna get into my top 10 favorite tools and things that I think are probably the most important, uh, at least were the most important uh, for building this airplane. Okay, so number 10 of my top 10 favorite tools or most important tools um, is this mat knife or razor knife. And I'll caveat that by saying that you should always have lots of extra blades. This is really important, particularly when you get into covering the aircraft. In general though, opening boxes, cutting things open, cutting small pieces of templates, all sorts of stuff like that. I mean, I find myself reaching for this tool really often and having sharp blades is absolutely critical for getting a good project done. So um, I'm always generous about throwing these away. If they're even remotely dull, I throw them away and I put a new one in. So um, definitely have a bunch of these spare and it was, it was one of my most important tools for building the process. As simple as it may seem, this is super important. And I would say that this would be something that you'd find typically in somebody's kitchen drawer um, and it's a pretty standard household tool that I'd, I would agree is pretty important. So number nine on the list is methyl ethyl ketone, MEK. Um, this is definitely not a standard household tool and I even sort of venture to say that it's not even a tool, but it's a really important um, solvent that is specifically for um, the polyfiber covering. But I'll say, I'll say that it definitely is something that's very useful throughout the entirety of the build process. When you're working with um, at least the Kit Fox kits, there's a lot of high sol, sol and varnish and all sorts of uh, chemicals, and MEK pretty much eats through all of it. If you spill or need cleanups, it's good to have a really strong solvent around that can help to clean it up. Rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol are all um, useful, acetone as well, but I'd say that it's very difficult to replace the efficacy of MEK, and I'd say that's why it makes it onto my top 10 list. Tool number eight will be the household staple, the needle nose pliers. I actually have a variety of these. I just have standard pliers, needle nose, but the needle nose are the ones that I probably reach for more out of any other tool. This one is also a pretty standard household tool, as I've said, and um, you definitely should have one of these in your home if you don't, or in your car. Uh, but it's, it's one of the more useful tools. You do use it for you know just about everything. Um, I, I almost, every day I was working on the plane, I probably use the needle nose. Um, and then uh, there's, it's good to have a good variety. Um, it would be nice to have some soft jaws with brass and all sorts of varieties of needle nose, but I'd say just a standard needle nose kit is one of the most important tools, and that's why it made it onto my list. So tool number seven um, is actually multiple tools, but it's a good set of DeWalt drivers or cordless drills. It doesn't have to be DeWalt, but uh, DeWalt's are some of my favorites. You gotta have batteries if you're cordless. I would say a corded drill would be almost not an option, but definitely a, a variety of drills. Now I'll say why is it important to have a set of varieties? This one's specifically for bits. It has a sort of a bit socket in there. They make some specifically for um, sockets, um, like, uh, what do you call those things? Like socket sets? So yeah, they, they do make these specifically for socket sets, and they also make some that are just drills um, that are designed for actually drill bits. I'd say it's important to have some for, 
at least a socket set, but also for bits, because um, it's good to have two, one for drilling and one for actual screwing things in or driving bolts, screws, things like that, so uh, that you can keep the bits in and, and drill and screw at different rates. Also, it's good to have uh, backup. In general, it's just a lot easier to have more variety and keep sort of dedicated tools for different reasons. Now, could you get away with just, if you had to just pick one drill, a standard sort of household drill will take pretty much all these things and you can get adapters and things like that to make it work like these. Uh, but these are actually a lot better. They have a clutch in them. Um, I'd say that, you know, having the full suite for me was a really important set and um, I wouldn't have been as productive without them. So this one's number eight. No, what is it? It's number, this one's number seven. Okay, on the topics of drills, I'll say that number six, I don't have in my current presence, there's not one in the hangar, but a drill press is a really, really important, really important tool, especially early on in the build process. I did not have a drill press later on in the build and I really uh, regretted it. Early on I had a drill press, it was a little bit wobbly, but it did the trick. And you just can't beat the quality of a drill press when it comes to drilling perfectly straight holes and um, through especially hard material. So can you get by without one? Yes, absolutely. But I'd say that in terms of build quality, your build quality will be so much better. It'll be so much easier. Everything will be faster if you had a drill press, especially early on in the build, um, and a good solid drill press that drills straight, uh, clean holes. Um, I'd say that that's, that definitely made it onto my list, even though I don't have one here and I didn't have one later on the build. It's, it's an important tool that I think would be, uh, I wouldn't say a requirement, but a highly recommended tool for the process. Okay, number five would be uh, a set of Clico pliers and a good set of number 30 and number 40 Clicos. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a Clico is, it's a, I didn't know what one was before I started building a plane. What it is, it's like a temporary rivet uh, and it allows you to stick this in a rivet hole and let go of it and it holds the thing that you're trying to rivet in place temporarily until you can actually get a rivet in it. Rivet in it. This actually is one of the things on my list that's included with the Kitfox Builders Kit and um, you, you couldn't build a plane, even, especially like our Vans RV. Uh, you could never build a plane really without a set of Clicos. So it's an absolute requirement, but it is also one of my favorite tools and I find myself reaching for it quite frequently. It's, it's in the top of my drill drawer, uh, my, my tool chest. Yeah, definitely one of my favorites. Included in the Builder's Toolkit. So you don't even have to worry about this if you buy the Builder's Toolkit and uh, definitely just an important tool across the board. Okay, tool number four, I don't actually have in my presence either. I have had one, um, but this is actually a multifaceted tool. There's a number of solutions I think that would meet the requirement. It would be nice to have all of them. So what, I, what tool number, number four is, is a grinder. So when I say grinder, the sort of catch-all would be like an angle grinder, uh, especially a cordless angle grinder that you can put different heads on and um, cutting blades and things like that. And um, that's for cutting, for sanding, for grinding. Um, early on, there's a lot of work with metal and you have to grind and cut and shape and things like that. And it's important to have a good, powerful grinder to deal with all that type of stuff. Now, I'll caveat that and say that a bench top uh, grinding wheel station is actually super important as well as a, uh, with like a wire wheel, Th that would be really helpful. Um, and that's sort of, I would say would meet the grinder requirement. And a, um, also a belt sander, which I consider to be sort of, sort of a form of a grinder. Um, it would, be, would have been super helpful. I never actually had one throughout the build process, but I, could, I remember myself thinking, gee, I'm using a grinder for this it would have been a lot nicer to have a belt sander or a bench top grinder, whatever it may be. So the grinder is sort of a multifaceted thing, but a grinder will meet all those requirements. And that's actually what I use mine for, but it would de definitely be good to have the full suite of them nonetheless. So that's number four. Tool number three, this is um, my favorite, probably one of my favorite tools in the drawer. And I didn't even know it existed until I started uh, building a plane. This is called a wobble head. Um, I've known what a U-joint is which is a, it's a universal joint that allows you to sort of wrench in, in over around an angle. This is just adds a little bit of play in a socket set and allows you to get into angled places pretty easily. Just doesn't constrain your, your wrenches as, as into like tight spaces. I leave this on my socket sets or on my, my DeWalt drill. This just lives on there. So I almost don't even drive without a wobble head because it's that convenient. Um, it works fine, it's just a traditional driver if you need it, but if you pop it out, it becomes a wobble head and, and works, uh, it's super helpful. So um, again, a tool I didn't even know about, um, but I'd say that this little wobble head extension was one of my uh, most reached for tools, especially later on in the build, um, when there's a, there's a lot of nuts and bolts to tighten down. 
So this one's number three. Tool number two is an easy number two to talk about because this is one of the more important tools for any home project, but particularly in building a plane, it's a, just a, a corded Dremel. They make cordless ones, they kind of burn out. This one, you know, I guess I could have tried a cordless one, but the corded ones work just fine. When you buy a Dremel, usually it comes with like a set of heads. Really the most important heads for the Dremel that um, I've found myself using were these, uh, what do they call them, fiberglass cutoff discs and then the little sanding wheels. Um, those two alone are enough really to get yourself by, but you know, it'd be good to have other bits here and there. Again, one of the things that I reach for all the time. Um, every time you're cutting ribs or uh, sanding on high saw or shaping whatever, it may be, carbon fiber, whatever it may be, it's, it's a really, really, really useful tool and it definitely makes it uh, the top, in the top 10, but number two of the top 10. One of the most important tools for the build. I don't think, I mean, yeah, you could build a whole plane with hand tools if you wanted to, but I don't think anybody should build a plane without having a good solid Dremel at their disposal. Last but not least is tool number one, which is this high saw dispenser, um, which I know seems kind of odd, but it's definitely hands down the most important tool to me. If I had it from the start, it would have dramatically improved not only the quality of my build, but also just build time, just general efficiencies, also aesthetics of the build. So what is a high saw dispenser? Well, when you build a plane, you have to use a structural adhesive, which is a two-part glue, basically, that um, you have to mix in perfect 50-50 ratio, like a one-to-one. -one. And what that does is it binds a lot of your structures together, um, certain parts. Different pieces of the plane are held together by this really, really strong structural adhesive. The kit fox, I don't know if it's the builder's kit or if it's just the kit itself, comes with these really big tubs of high saw in two parts. And the way that I was mixing it, I mean, we can pull up some videos um, in the past, was, you know, you shovel out a certain amount onto a scale and weigh it out, and then you shovel out another amount onto a scale and try and get exactly the same amount, and then you mix it into a bag, and then you only have 30 or 30 minutes to an hour to use it, and then you have to dispense it to where you're going, and it's kind of a mess. Kitbox includes these little syringes with the build kit. Never used it. It was such a pain. I tried to use one once. I had two of them, and I was like, wow, that's, that's uh, horrible. So what I ended up using was plastic bags I'd mix, it in the, I'd mix the high saw in the plastic bag and then dispense it out like an icing dispenser. Um, towards the end, I bit the bullet and bought one of these. This was 25 bucks. Um, I wanted to get through all the high saw that Kitfox included because it felt like a waste not to use it. And buying these cartridges, they're not cheap, but um, you know, they're not, you know, you're not gonna break the bank on high saw relative to the cost of the build. But I'd say that you can't do nice fillets really without having a good high saw dispenser. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to be a, a hater because some people might be able to pull it off, but I had a really hard time getting nice fillets before I had this thing. And uh, when I bought it, it really, it, it does so much for you. It has like very precise, um, you can very precisely put where you want high saw. So you can exactly put where your adhesive needs to be, which means that you're not wasting. Um, it instantaneously mixes. So there's no prep time or mixing or scales or anything. It automatically like mixes the 50-50 mix down the tube. When you're done, there's no excess, there's no loss. You only, the only like high saw that you lose is the stuff that's left over in the tube. You just take the head off and throw it away and you can put another tube on it later when you need it. So basically it's ready to go whenever you need it. There's no waste, there's no mixing. You don't make a mess um, and you get exactly what you want where you want it. So Kit Fox, I, I've seen some videos and when I was at the factory, I saw their like industrial gun. I think it's pneumatically powered, I can't remember. But they have this mega gun for disp uh, dispensing high saw. Um, you know, I don't know how much one of those things costs. They're probably hundreds of dollars. This thing was 25 bucks on Granger, And these things, I don't remember how much the tubes cost a piece, but it's not that bad. And I just bought like a whole bunch of them and um, really dramatically improved the build process. So that's why this is tool number one for me. And uh, would, I, I, you know, if I had built it, th built a plane from the start with this, my fillets would be a lot better. I just would feel a lot better about some of the aesthetics of the plane and it would have saved me a lot of time and energy. So definitely a must have tool that everybody should have. Now I have broken one, these are pretty cheap. So I'm sure they make nicer versions of this, but you know, for 25 bucks, it's still well worth the spend. Um, so tool number one. How much time do you think it saved you? I don't know. I mean, this saved me probably, I don't know, many tens of hours of work. Not only, it's, it's not just about dispensing the high saw and mixing the high saw and um, you know, weighing out the high saw. It's also the cleanup. When you have one of these, you spend a lot less time masking and cleaning up and dealing with solvents. So just across the board, it's a huge savings for energy when you get one of these things. So yeah, best, best tool in my drawer, as stupid and simple as it is, it's still number one. Okay, you thought we were done. Turns out I have two bonus tools. 
They didn't make it on the top 10 list, but I want to mention them because um, I think they're, they're quite important. They were something, things that I thought about and uh, that are actually were important to me throughout the build process. And the first bonus tool that I'll mention is a bandsaw. I built this whole aircraft behind me without a bandsaw. But if I had to like, measure which tool I said, ah, oh, gee, I wish I had that tool, it would be a bandsaw. More times than not, I asked myself, why don't I have a bandsaw? Why don't I have a bandsaw? I couldn't justify going out and spending whatever a bandsaw costs, like 200, 300 bucks for a nice one, um, plus the blades, and then storing it somewhere. I couldn't, I couldn't justify to myself um, basically buying a bandsaw just to build the plane. Uh, but had I you know, thought about this and wanted to do it again, I would say I would have started off the bat with a bandsaw. It would have really helped me save time, energy, and improved quality of the build throughout, throughout the whole process. So definitely something to consider, especially if you, if you don't buy the prefab kit from Kitfox, I'd say a bandsaw is almost even a requirement, uh, but if not, it's definitely something I'd recommend. Don't have one, don't have one here, but it is something that I thought about, so that's why it makes it on the, the bonus list. Okay, and the last bonus tool that I'll bring up. I've talked about this in this tool before. This is a, a solid rivet, rivet squeezer. It's my favorite tool ever. Not necessarily because I like what it does. I mean, I do like what it does, but um, I, I bought this because it was an, sort of an optional thing. Uh, Kit Fox says that you can put flush rivets in, and uh, this is the way to put a flush rivet in. Um, I'm not going to go into detail of what a flush rivet is, but they're a lot nicer than a pop rivet. So this was a, this would have been a way of, of this is the really the only way to do it. I mean, in theory, you can use like a bucking bar and like a hammer and stuff like that, but that's kind of a pain. But um, I bought this, it was pretty expensive, but it's definitely the nicest tool I've ever know, owned. It's like heavy, I don't even know what it's made out of, like stainless or, I don't know, maybe it could be titanium, I have no idea, but uh, it's really a beautiful tool. Um, and I honestly just like wanna mount it on my wall because it's that nice. So, uh, you know, not, so a lot of times you buy tool, particularly nowadays, everything's sort of made cheaply and you, know, you kind of look at it and you don't really feel good about that tool. Um, this one I feel good about. Like, I just felt like this was like really good money well spent just because like, I don't know. I'm, I don't need to rant about this tool anymore because I've already done that in previous videos, but um, definitely my favorite tool in the drawer uh, just from an aesthetic standpoint and uh, just craftsmanship, it's just awesome. So that's enough about the rivet squeezer, but still my top 10 or at least it's my, one of my favorite tools and it's, uh, you know, just because it's a bonus, but you don't need one. I just would recommend having one. Um, and even if you just want a piece of wall art, it's a lot cheaper than like a Picasso, but I think it's still cooler, so. Okay, that's a wrap. Those are my top 10 favorite and most important tools that I had for building a Kit Fox. And in general, probably applies to home-built aircraft. I will say this, that is not at all an inclusive list of what it takes to build an airplane. I have a much more inclusive list up on my website and I could do a whole you know, five day series about tools and uh, tool techniques and uh, just even sourcing tools is, is hard. But I digress. If you want more information, go on my website. There's tons of YouTube resources out there already. Um, we're not gonna go into detail out about how to build a kit box. There's plenty of videos on there that I've done before about you know, the build process in its entirety. I just wanted to you know, reflect on the process and talk about the tools that I, that I uh, thought were important. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.